And I want to thank you for being in worship this day uh, as we continue on in this sermon series on really on the Holy Spirit and who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does in our life. And today I want to take a look at gaining guidance, getting guidance from the Holy Spirit. So that certainly is an important thing for all of us. Uh, and then later on, Pastor Charlotte is going to be talking about details of upcoming events here at Good Shepherd and how you can get connected to that. But before we begin, uh, let's bow our heads and pray together. Lord, we give you thanks and praise that you are with us this day, wherever we might be. That you, Holy Spirit, are there to, to guide us, to instruct us, to comfort us and strengthen us. Help us this day that we might turn our hearts and minds in worship to you. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us unite our voices in the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. God, your presence is made known in the beauty of creation, and your joy sparkles in the eyes of children. We celebrate abundant life as we are able to join together once again to play and share Bible stories in person. Forgive us when we find ourselves stuck in paths that go to unhealthy places. May we look to you for guidance in practicing the best ways to be people of faith. Forgive us when we think we can control everything and everyone. Help us stay the path and trust in you. 
so others will see the joy of our faith in you. We thank you for people who respond to your nudge and reach out to others, to those who have lost a job, to one who is grieving, or one feeling hopeless and no direction. We thank you for people who are the hands of Christ, sharing your love with their families and their community. We thank you for people who listen to your call and work towards finding cures for diseases, who work towards peaceful resolutions in families and among nations, who plant seeds of hope and unity in building your kingdom. We thank you for the life of Jesus, who shows us the way to abundant living, and for the prayer he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> pray together saying, God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, 
we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Hear these words from Habakkuk in chapter 2. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. And from the book of James in chapter 1. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given you. But ask in faith, never doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for being a part of worship this day, and thank you for uh, being here as we continue on, a, on in this sermon series on the Holy Spirit. Today, I really want to focus on the guidance that we can receive from the Holy Spirit. You know, as I was thinking about that this week, I was reminded of something that happened to me when I was about, I don't know, 15 years old, something like that, and I was out uh, walking around on my grandfather and grandmother Kyle's place, and at one point, I decided I would kind of veer out, and I would go into this other place that had a really thick stand of blackjacks and other things there, kind of a densely forested area area and I was going to go through there and just look and see what was in that area. Never been in there before and so I headed into that area and I went in and about I don't know about 20 minutes in or so I was looking at different uh, features in the geography and different type of trees and things like that were in there. It's kind of fascinating but I realized all of a sudden I had no clue about which direction I needed to go. I mean I was all of a sudden I just realized I'm just flat lost in here. You ever been lost You've been in a situation where you just don't know which direction to go and, and you don't have anything to guide you and, you know, you're just kind of out there on your own. You're kind of like wondering which way, which direction to go in your life. Well, that was kind of me that particular day. I was out there by myself and I was lost in those woods and I, I was sitting there and I was thinking, okay, so what am I going to do to get out of here? Because I really don't have any idea which direction to go. Uh, and I thought, oh, wait a second, I know what I need to do. I need to look up. I need to look up. And so I looked up, and it was about 3 in the afternoon or so, 3.30 in the afternoon. And so the sun had started to kind of go down in the sky just a bit. And I thought to myself, okay, that's the sun going down towards the west. And if I keep that kind of up to my left here, and if I head down from one tree out to the distance of the next tree, and then down in the distance of the next tree, and keep that sun in that position, kind of look it up, I will be okay and I'll make it out. And so sure enough, I don't know, it was about 20 or 30 minutes later that I finally got to the fence line and finally figured out where my car would be at that point and got to that. Uh, and, uh, but I was, I was kind of lost and being lost and not knowing which direction to go is kind of not a good situation. Well, sometimes we can get lost not simply we're out in the woods, but we can get simply lost in life as well. And, and you know, what direction do I go into and, and where can I get guidance at? And so it's pretty good to, to remember at that point, I need to look up. I need to look to God. And just to give you an example of that, the scripture passage that was read today is from the prophet Habakkuk. And Habakkuk was a prophet of God in about the year 600 B.C., uh, and he had really some questions going on inside of himself about what was going on in his life and the life of his nation, which was Israel. Uh, and so he needed some guidance from God, and he was seeking to look up and get guidance from the Holy Spirit. And as he did that, it says, he writes this down, I, climb, I will climb my watchtower and wait to see what the Lord will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. 
Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that it can be read at a glance. Now that's really a good example right there about how to seek guidance from God, how to seek guidance from the Holy Spirit. Now, why ask the Holy Spirit for guidance? And you'll see there on your screen, uh, why ask the Spirit for guidance? Well, first of all, because the Spirit is the Lord God who comes to guide you. Jesus says, the Father will send the Spirit in my name who will guide you. This also is, Paul says, it's the Spirit of Jesus that is coming. You know, that's not a bad Spirit to have leading us. It also says the prophet Isaiah, it's the Spirit of wisdom. Well, who wouldn't want to be led in your life by a Spirit that is the Spirit of wisdom and profound truth? And that is also the Spirit that knows the best plan for your life and mine, as the prophet Jeremiah reminds us. The Holy Spirit is the one to be guided by the one that we need to be guided by in our lives. But in order to do that, I just want to uh, put forward that, that we've got to decide to let go of some things in our lives that we're going to be guided by the Spirit of God. Now, as I was thinking about that, I was reminded of a story that I was told about three or four weeks ago. And this was from the same guy that told me uh, the story that I mentioned last week about he was mountain biking up the side of the mountain there, and, and all of a sudden he came right by a, a mountain lion that was crouched right next to the road. Uh, well, he also said there was another kind of odd thing that happened to him. He said one morning before dawn, his, he and his wife were out biking. This was in the summer in the Phoenix area, and they were out in kind of in this wilderness area. And he said they, he, he noticed there was some kind of a weird so, now, noise or sound that was back behind him. And he said, I had my headlight on my bike and I had my headlight on my helmet, which I could look at things from side to side. And he says, I was riding the bike and I thought maybe there's something that got stuck and is dragging behind me. And so he said, I looked behind and as I looked behind, I noticed back behind me there and my wife was this cow running after us. And I thought, what is a cow doing running after us? And I said, well, maybe the cow thought that you and your wife out there in the dark were the herd, and he was going to herd in with you, and he was going to be led by you, even though you were not his kind, but he was going to, you know, be led by you. I think that, that sometimes in life, we can, get be, we can be led by the wrong things. We can kind of herd into the wrong things. And so if I'm going to be led by the Spirit of God, I must decide to stop being led by certain things. For instance, I must decide to stop being led by my culture, by my culture, by my society. As Paul says in Romans 12, do not be conformed to this world. Now, uh, you know, can your society, can the society influence you? Can it, your culture, can our culture lead us in the wrong direction? Yeah, I, I think that would be an easy yes. You know, I, it was interesting to me. I was uh, driving with my wife and, and we were looking at some of the people because, you know, they don't have any masks on now. And they're riding, driving around in their cars. And, and she said, did you notice something? I said, what's that? She said, look at the faces of the people at that, as you're driving around. She said, I've been looking at people's faces and I've noticed something. That they have this kind of tense look in their face. That they have this kind of anxiousness or, or you know, feeling like they're, it looks like they're kind of weighed down by something. And she said, I think that that's, our, that's kind of the pandemic face that they still got on. Well, can our society, can the things that are going on in our culture influence us and sometimes influence us in the wrong direction? Sure. My friends could do that too, you know. Sometimes friends, even with the best of intentions, can lead us in the wrong directions. Or sometimes we have substitutes that we create for ourselves for God. You know, if you want to know whether or not God is first in your life, just ask that question of the Spirit. You know, Holy Spirit, what, what's really first in my life? Because the truth is we really have a hard time seeing ourselves, but God sees us completely. And so if I want to know, am I putting something before God in my life? Maybe it'd be a good idea to ask the Spirit that question. What's really first in my life? Sometimes it's circumstances that lead us along. Uh, for instance, the Apostle Paul in the 27th chapter of Acts, he talks about how he's been arrested and he's been going to be taken to Rome to go before the emperor. And he's got this centurion that's going to be uh, helping him get on the, you know, get him on the, on the, as a prisoner onto this boat and head towards Rome. And they go to the ship's captain and is it time? Can we go? And this is kind of in the winter season. And the guys they, that, are the, that are the sailors, they decide, yeah, this looks like the weather's okay. We should be able to make it. And Paul tries to tell them, no, if you do, you're going to lose this ship, and you've got a good chance of losing a bunch of people too. Uh, this is what the Lord's kind of indicated to me, and maybe you want to listen to that. And they say, no, 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 no. We see the circumstances. They're okay. We're going to move. And they get in to the ship, and they get out on the ocean, and 
all of a sudden a northeasterner hits them, a big winter storm hits them, and they can't control themselves because guess what? Because the circumstances are pushing them. The circumstances are leading them, and they have no control in that situation. Sometimes the circumstances try to push us along and lead us along. Sometimes my feelings do that too. You know, the prophet Jeremiah said, the heart is exceedingly deceitful above all things. Above all things. Oh, I got this feeling. Yeah, I understand. And feelings are very important and valuable in life. But sometimes those feelings lead us in the wrong direction. So I need to decide to quit being led by these things. And I, instead, I need to decide to seek God's wisdom, God's guidance in the Holy Spirit. So how do I ask for guidance? Let me suggest three things that, I, that persons need to do uh, in order to prepare the ground for that. First of all is I need to believe that the Holy Spirit cares about the details of my life. You see that quote from Matthew. So Jesus says this, so don't worry, saying, what shall we eat or drink or where? Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. In other words, God is aware of the details. Not only the physical details of our life, but also the spiritual details of our life. Like in Psalm 23, where it says that uh, he's going to lead me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He's concerned about my spiritual well-being, too, and the details of that. Let me, let me give you an example from uh, the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. For the Holy Spirit is guiding this guy by the name of Simeon. Simeon had been in the temple worshiping God on a regular basis for many, many decades. And it says that in Luke 2, it says, It had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit, here's the details, that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And then it gets even more detailed. So Simeon wakes up one day and he says the Spirit, he's guided by the Spirit into the temple of God at the right place, at the right time. And there he meets Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus. The very thing that the Holy Spirit had said, this is part of your life, this is a detail of your life, and it's going to happen. I'm going to make it happen for you. See, details matter to restoring my soul, it says the Scripture. Details matter to leading us into the way that the Spirit has as far as the purpose of our life. And so we need to trust that the details of our life matter to God's Spirit. And there's another thing. I need to ask the Spirit specific questions. You see, James 1, the brother of the Lord, writes this. If, we, if you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him and he will gladly tell you. You know, as I was reading that this week, I was reminded of the times and the places in the Old Testament when they would quote, be, they would inquire of the Lord. They would inquire of the Lord. You know, Lord, in this situation, what do you want us to do? What's the best course of action for us? Now, I think a lot of times, instead of being specific about it, we kind of ask in a kind of a vague sense, and, and we, you know, think that, well, maybe, the, maybe God really, the Holy Spirit, doesn't really want to hear the details and the specifics, uh, and he just, you know, God doesn't have time for that. He, we don't want to bore him, or just want to only bother him, and that's, that's just not true. I ask God's Spirit about specific things and specific questions, and there's a way that God's in guiding us to do that, to ask about the specifics with a spirit of humility. Like, you know, say, God, I'm really lost here. I just don't know what to do. And I need your guidance. Would you, would you please help me? That's why the psalmist says in Psalm 25, God guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. Also, I need to expect the Holy Spirit to answer. Again, James, the brother of the Lord, says this, God is always ready to give a bountiful supply of wisdom to all who ask. He doesn't resent that, he says, says James, but when you ask him, be sure that you really expect him to, to tell you what you need, to give you that wisdom, give you that guidance that you need. And it may be a small thing, and it may be a great thing. You know, uh, St. Teresa uh, once said, you pay God a great compliment by asking great things of Him. You pay God a great compliment by asking great things of Him. And so it's okay to ask great things from the Holy Spirit and to expect God's Spirit to do great things in your life as He guides you and He guides me. So how do I receive this guidance from the Spirit? I've asked for it, and so, you know, how do I get into that process 
where I can, I'm going to be receiving guidance from the Holy Spirit. And I want to lift up five things that Habakkuk the prophet teaches in just those couple of verses there in his book in the Old Testament. Uh, and the first thing is that get alone in a quiet place. Get alone in a quiet place. You see there Habakkuk 2.1, I will climb my watchtower. In other words, I'm going to get away from other folks. I'm going to get into a, a quiet place. I'm going to get into my watchtower. And guess what? Jesus did the same thing. You see there from the Gospels, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. And then he instructs us in the Sermon on the Mount, whenever you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Heavenly Father in secret. In other words, that it's important to be by ourselves in that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God and to be in a quiet place where that's where we can focus on. Uh, but let's think about that being alone with God. Now, I understand that a lot of people, they have a lot of things. We've got a lot of things going on in our life. We're kind of busy, especially we've got kids, you know. And, and you know, what are we going to do with the kids and all that kind of stuff? Uh, so let me give you an example of somebody uh, that was an extraordinary person in what they would do. Uh, and it's a, a woman by the name of Susanna Wesley. Susanna Wesley, in the 18th century, she had 18 children. You know, we have the saying, one and done now. Uh, well, it was 18 and done for Susanna and, and her husband. Uh, and... Uh, Susanna, despite she had all these kids in their house that she took care of, uh, these 18 kids, she prayed 60 to an hour to an hour and a half each day. Now, think about that. 18 kids, an hour to an hour and a half each day. Now, how would she do that? Well, what she did was she had an apron uh, that she would wear, and, and then she would go into the main area, the main room in the house, and she would take the apron, and she would literally fold it up over her head, and there, under that apron, she would pray. And the kids were instructed, do not disturb mom when she's in there with that apron over her head because she's praying to the Lord. Now, maybe that's one reason why out of that household came two young men who, who led the great English revival of that century. It's also a question of, uh, well, I guess I would call the noisiness of our world. Sometimes it's too noisy to hear God's Spirit try to guide us. And so it's really essential that we remove the distractions. You know, uh, when I was uh, younger, uh, we used to have people would say all the time about, they talk about a quiet time. Have you had your quiet time? Are you scheduling in your quiet time? And that quiet time would be a place, maybe, let's say, you would get out in the morning onto the back porch with a cup of coffee and a Bible, and you would read the Bible, and you would take some time to be in quiet and be with the Lord. And that would be one way that people would, they would eliminate those distractions to focus on Him. You know, I know with my, in my situation, what I do, one of the things is I, I get into one room of the house, I shut the door, and I've got, my, I've got my cell phone, and the first thing I do with that cell phone is I put it on airplane mode, and I make sure that I've got all the notifications turned off. And it's, it's dead, you know, except for being on the battery there. Because I know how the cell phones and the iPads and other stuff like that, how they can disrupt our time with God. The second thing, calm your thoughts and emotions. You see what Habakkuk says, and wait to see. He waited to see what the Lord would, will tell me. In other words, he had to wait. We see that in, in Psalm, 5, Psalm 5, 3, where it says, The Lord, Lord, every morning I tell you what I need, and I wait for your answer. In other words, I'm going to wait again. And then, as Psalm 46 says, Be still and know that I am God. In other words, to be still before the Lord. Now, again, what did Jesus do? Well, there's a quote from Luke 6 in which it says that during those days, now those days were days where, you know, this ministry was really going on and people were seeking him, people were following him, uh, th amazing things were being done. They were just constantly hanging on his words and what have you, and people were coming and going all the time. So these were busy days. During those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. Now, you might think, boy, Jesus, he is so spiritual because he just would take a whole night. You know why he did that? Because he didn't have time during the day to do that. And so he said, this is a priority. I have got to take time to be with my Heavenly Father. And so if it means that I've got to go out there in the night and do it. In, in the night, in the wee hours of the morning, that's what I'm going to do. Because that comes first. That comes first. But the problem is that nowadays uh, our minds are kind of like, well, 
a car radio scanner. If you ever had a car uh, radio scanner, you hit the button and it goes from one channel to the next channel to the next channel. So it is kind of with our minds today. We're going from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. You know, we're jumping stations every five seconds. And I just want to say, if Jesus needed time to separate from the crowds, to cut the noise, to calm down from the emotions and the thoughts and the business, and to listen for the guidance of the Spirit, you and I probably need to as well. Do we not? Then next thing, let the Holy Spirit give you a mental picture, a mental picture. Look at what Habakkuk says. I will look to see, I will look to see what he will say to me. See, because the Holy Spirit doesn't just answer in, in kind of words that are, are phrases that are whispered to our hearts, but often the Holy Spirit uses images and pictures. Now that's really important because there's probably 50 to 75% of the population that they think more in pictures than they do in words. And so it, sometimes it's important for us to just ask, Holy Spirit, is there anything that you want to show me? You want to show me? So let me suggest an exercise. Sit down this week and take five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. And you're in a quiet place, you're by yourself, and, and in that time, ask God this question. God, would you help me to picture what my life would look like if everything that was happening was happening just like you wanted it to? What would my life look like if in my life everything was happening the way that you, God, wanted it to? And wait for that visual impression of what that would be like. Now, Again, I want to re remind you like I did last week. Remember, always test impressions, right? But sometimes God speaks to us through visual impressions. Then record the ideas you receive. You see, the Lord gave me this answer. Write down clearly what I reveal to you. In other words, I'm supposed to write that thing down. So I want to suggest, again, I want to suggest another exercise you might do this week. Go down to Walmart or to Family Daughter or Dollar General or something like that and buy one of those kind of like wiring notebooks and get that thing and uh, go down the page, just make a line down the page, make two columns, and on the top of one say what I said to the Holy Spirit and on the other side what the Holy Spirit said to me. And write those down, and then on the one side, write down the things that you say to the Holy Spirit, that you pray to Him. And then on, this is the revolutionary thing. On the other side, write down the things that the Holy Spirit says to you. Because guess what? All of a sudden, you've got communication with God's Spirit going. See, it's important to write that stuff down because it helps us to focus what we've said it also helps us to remember what we asked and what was the response. And it's also a good way to put it before so we can kind of test what we heard. You know, you know, does that sound right? Does that sound like something God's Spirit would say to me? Or is, is that something else going on inside of me? Finally, thank the Holy Spirit for speaking to you. You see what Habakkuk said, Oh Lord, now I have heard your report and I worship you in awe. In other words, to thank him for this clear and daily expression. Now, I understand sometimes it's hard for us to hear it during a particular day. Sometimes that's a series of day, days. But for this clear and daily expression of love for you, for you. So finally, let's, and let me ask you three questions here. So ask yourself, what do I need to stop being led by? so that God can lead my life. The second one there is, what specifically, for what specifically do I need to ask for guidance from the Spirit for? And then third, where and when am I going to practice this week these five things that the prophet is showing us here, the way that he asked God, and where am I going to practice that, when am I going to practice that this week about how to receive guidance from the Holy Spirit? Because you see, the Spirit is with you. The Spirit knows you and He loves you. And one of the purposes He's been given to you, says Jesus, is to guide you forward in your life. Let's pray together. Lord, we give you thanks that you have cared for us so much that you, the Father, have sent the Spirit to be with us. Help us 
Help us not to be led by, by things then, by people and by circumstances that are going to lead us off the path. But help us this week to turn to you and to value your wisdom and your understanding and put that first above all things. Help us to do like the prophets, prophet did, to, to take time to, to be in a quiet place alone with you, to put our petition before you and just be there to wait, to listen to you, to calm our, our feelings, our, our thoughts, so that we can listen to you and to trust that, yes, you're going to speak to us. You're going to give us a, a word of guidance. You're going to give us a word of impression so that you can guide us in our lives forward to a better, fuller, more abundant life. Father, we thank you for these things, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Here's a few things for you to remember this week. Offerings are an important part of our worship of God. We support God's work in the world through Good Shepherd's General Fund. And you can help by sending a check to the church or by going online to Good Shepherd's website at umcgs.org. Scroll down to the Give button. On Wednesday, June 23rd, Pastor Michael will be leading a six-week exploration of Paul's letter to the Galatians based on Kyle Eidelman's study entitled, The Book of Galatians. To preview the study or get a free copy of the Participant's Guide, you can find both on your Good Shepherd Right Now Media account. If you don't have a Right Now Media account, you can get a free account by texting Right Now Good Shepherd to 41411. A registration link will be sent by text to you so you can set up a free account and gain access to these resources and more for free. If you want to be part of the study group, you can contact the church office or come to our first meeting on June 23rd at 6.30 p.m. in the Christian Life Center. In person, children are gathering for Sunday morning, and it starts at 11 a.m. Between the two buildings on the south side, look for the tents and check your children or your grandchildren in for Sunday school. And we look forward to you coming. So now let us go forth and be God's people. Remember, God loves you. Go out into the world and share God's love. Amen.